And what do we have here? Christmas in February? Key parts. I reckon this might be our floor pan for the rabbit. Pretty excited. This took about a week and a half to finally ship, but it's here, so I can't wait to open this up and uh, take a look at it. So here it is, unboxed. First impression, it's all right. I don't think it's anything to write home about. I'm gonna flip it over. I don't know why I was expecting it to be black, you know, coated with that special black anti-rust paint for shipping. I mean, here it is. This is what it looks like. It's not the greatest quality. This is deliberate. This is kind of cut to make it fit. And then it's kind of pinched here in a weird way. But, you know, we'll throw her in the rabbit and see how she fits. I think this one I'm gonna cut in two, front and back. I'm not doing the whole half. All right, and there it is in the rabbit. Help me understand some of the math here. I mean, I know we can cut this any way we want, but why is there this lip here, right? There's this huge rise here of, I don't know, 10 inches. And then this is like three inches up and there's this lip. I mean, is that supposed to be this lip? Makes no sense. But yeah, I'm gonna just trim it and uh, I'm going to la uh, lap weld it, not butt weld it. I know a lot of guys will get bent out of shape that I'm not butt welding this, but the factory lap welded, you know, they pinch weld and lap weld it a lot, everything pretty much. And so that's how I'm gonna do it. Guys, welcome back to Marathon Garage, where we believe in running away from your problems. And what I wanna show you today is that I'm taking a little break from working on the motor mounts because I ran into an issue here with these, what I call the cup holders these stubs get in there so it goes in there but because I mocked this up without these cups because my transmission didn't have them as you can see we're having a little bit interference so we're gonna pretend that's not an issue and go work on something else so I'm going to work on mounting the floor pan she's in there but I want to take you under the car and show you that what I'm gonna work, start with is cutting out this this rail for the seats so the new one doesn't come with it uh, and I'm not going to transfer it I'm going to install a different set of seats we'll get to that in another video for now I want to dive under the car and show you what I'm up against uh, in an attempt to cut that out okay so here I am underneath the rabbit and there's this extra shield that I think I need to unscrew. I hope that's a 10 mil. It runs underneath the tunnel. The, I almost said a drive shaft tunnel, but it's exhaust. And so this needs to come out. Can the one arm bandit do this for you on camera? Was it just one ball? Whoa, whoop de -dee. Well, I'm glad I cut that out because what are these? This looks like a brake cable and I would have sliced this otherwise and that would not have been pretty. So here we can see how that pan drops under there. There is a bit of reinforcement, so this is nice. I'm gonna try to tap into that thicker steel. Let me clean this up a bit and uh, report back.
So I have cut out as much of this seal as I could. And now I'm just gonna show you on camera how I just fatigue the rest of the rusty metal here. Bam. Whew. She's out. Sorry about the shaky cam, but uh, hard to find good help these days. There it is. This is not going back in. We're not gonna run this style. I don't think. So that's out. Hopefully there's enough meat on the new one to meet that in. Haha. <laughs> so I've got to take care of the parking brake next and then we'll be ready to cut this out, I think. Well, y'all, she's cut out. This is what you get when you have ran out of blades, cutting discs. You ordered some, but they haven't arrived yet. So let's throw this on our shiny new piece and see how it compares. Let's see how this does on our new piece. Sorry about the shadows, you know, filming outside, not the optimal conditions. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to guess how this goes. I reckon that, that circle is that circle. So, we're looking at something like that. And I still don't get this lip. I don't get this lip. I'm gonna chop her off. And we're not gonna use this edge. So I'll probably trim that off as well. And then cut this a little bit bigger. The one thing I wish this piece, the new piece had, was a much taller side here, the back side, the inside what by the tunnel. See how it's really tall right here? And then it drops to like one inch right there. I don't understand. I know they're probably trying to make that go under the seat rail or something. But that thing is rotted and rusty, so it's got to come out. Anyway, let me see if I can trim this some. Sorry about the wind noise, guys. It is the windiest day of the year. So here it is. The rear piece, what we're focusing on right now trimmed out of the half and it's ready for more nip and tucking but we're going to take it over to the car and see how that just fits i cut the back lip off trimmed the little corner piece here and we'll see how this fits for starters and then work with it work it in so this is time to wear your deer skin gloves these edges are sharp and i didn't even deburr them yet i'm just going to 
try it. There's really no sense in deburring on the first cut because you're gonna trim so much off that you're gonna spend your lifetime deburring. So just be careful with it. It doesn't fit that well. I mean, it's in there, but it's sitting a bit high. You know, there's a gap here that we need to adjust. And there's quite a bit of adjusting to do. I'm just showing you kind of that. At least it's not for a Volvo, right? Or a Pinto. It's for an MK1 Rabbit, supposedly. So I'm going to go to town and clean out the edges and then start trimming and getting it in there. Here you can see the red line. That was kind of tracing the other piece, but we always want to cut a bit bigger, right? We can always make it smaller. And yes, I know we can weld on pieces of metal to make it bigger, but it's a whole lot easier to make it smaller. So not too shabby. Let me clean this up and go from there. point something out to you guys as I attempt to fit this thing. None of these sort of uh, pinch fittings work, okay? I'm gonna have to cut those flat because they really create an obstruction. See how much that sticks out? That's not acceptable. So I'll just have to weld that in. So that's kind of poorly, poorly stamped. And I pointed this out in my initial video. So I'll try to fix that and get back to you bit of comic relief. Does this happen to you guys? You know, what is this? 80% of the glove is good and 20% is bad. What the heck? Are you effing kidding me? So I'm welding, I'm trying to put in a little strip in there, do a repair. My wire stops feeding. Well, has this ever happened to one of you? I'm sure never, right? We are out of welding wire, so I gotta run to Home Depot. Usually I order these online, but here we go. So I've been at it for a little while and haven't made it quite all the way around yet, but it's going pretty good. I need to do this little stretch, I don't know, like eight inches, just tack it. And I've gone around the perimeter pretty much. And I want to show you this because this is kind of what it looks like. And then I hammer it and I press it in with this pry bar as I tack. And it's getting there. You know, it's got to be welded, grinded, welded, grinded. Then uh, primer, painted, textured, hidden under a floor mat. Standard operating procedure. Had to replace the welding wire. So did that running 0.025. Don't know what that is in uh, millimillies, but thinnest one you can get, I reckon.
So here's what it looks like. And I'm getting braver and trying to run like half inch uh, beads like there. I'm trying to think where else I tried it. Some other places. And I had trouble initially because this stuff, you know, it's the old saying, you can't weld rust. All this stuff here I cut out and then it kind of burnt out on me. So there's a patch. It will all be welded in and smooth. I'm just showing you what it looks like in the process. I'm trying to see where else I tried to run some. So here I was trying to get braver and just run some half inchers. Not sure if that's a good idea or not, but I want to weld this all the way around just because I don't want to use seam sealer and I want to practice. I need to practice my welding. I mean, it's horrid, you know? So I need to practice. Sheet metal is hard. When it comes to welding, it's the thick stuff that's easier to weld, supposedly. Harder to burn through. Of course, there you're worrying about penetration. I'm always worrying about penetration. But with sheet metal, you're worrying about burning through. It's always something. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. There's a storm a brewing. Doesn't look like it, but there's some great clouds up ahead. Whew, not a bad day for welding. So I want to bring you guys under here and show you how well this fits. I mean, this is too good for a good enough garage. See, this is what I was talking about doing a lap. I did a lap joint, but it's really flush and it's vertical, right? So it's it's like this. It's not scooped. It's like this. And it's that idea all the way around here. I actually started to weld. Um, I started to weld underneath as well, just because I'm that guy. Okay guys, so this is the front and sorry about the camera work. I know it's horrible. This is the only part that's horizontal. So the front piece is horizontal, horizontal lap. It's overlapping by an inch or so, maybe half inch. But I'm gonna make that flush and weld that. And then the tunnel and the other two sides, plus the tunnel. This is all gonna get cleaned up and grounded. But yeah, it fits awesome. I am so happy with this. Well guys, I went until I ran out of gas. I mean welding gas. So I am extremely happy with this. Uh, this is my first floor pan. I sort of did one on a 68 Mustang, but uh, I have uh, floor pan amnesia and I don't know how that ended up. So here I was doing a little patch. This was, you can see I'm out of gas. So I'm gonna have to go get some. I'm not sure if they're open on Monday, tomorrow, because it's a holiday, President's Day. But I am extremely happy with this. It's solid, it's not done. I am going to go th around it some more. And uh, it's all welded, right? I even shine the light underneath it. It does look fogly, maybe some seam sealer and a little bit more grindage. There are some spots still that are probably missed. I don't know, but no light was shining through it in those parts anyway. So that is, don't look at that. Just don't look at it. That's all rusty metal I'm trying to weld. You can't weld rusty metal. So that's just going to get, it's solid underneath, but what am I showing you here? Solid underneath, but not on top there. So whatevs, the floor pan that I bought did not go that far. So here it is from the other side. Again, it's about 82% finished, right? I need to go around it some more. And then, you know, seam sealer, primer, paint, putty, caulking, whatevs, distance, floor mat, carpet, and you'll never know. But she's solid, solid, and I did go underneath and I welded her around underneath as well. So this ain't going nowhere. I'm not looking forward to doing that one, but it's gonna get done as well.